Hello, my name is Jennifer Ling Datchuk, and I'm super excited to talk to you about the Lighten International Artist Exchange Program, a really wonderful grant opportunity that really changed and shaped my practice. It gave me the wonderful experience of traveling and participating in a residency in the Netherlands. And most importantly, I've met a lot of great people through this travel experience. The application for the Lighten International Art Exchange Program Award is one of the longest applications you will ever fill out, but in many ways it forces you to be able to understand your work and why this award is so important to your practice. It made me really think about why I needed to travel to the Netherlands, that how I thought this experience would force my work to change and grow and one of the main reasons is is that my practice is deeply rooted in the history of blue and white porcelain and I've researched and studied it throughout Asia and I really wanted to learn more about it as it migrated towards the east and west and one of those point of origins is the Netherlands and for me this is an opportunity to study Delft blue and white I knew I arrived in the blue and white city of Delft when I saw all the blue and white cottages and family studios lining the canal. Each of these family run studios produced limited edition hand painted blue and white wares that ranged from hand painted animals to plates and chargers to everyday decorative objects. I took an individual lesson to kind of learn more about the Delft patterns, but for me to see how these really actually kind of tiny factories operated. And it was actually fun to do this, and even though it felt touristy, because it kind of took the pressure off where I could just sit back and observe and enjoy. And this happened to be one of my most favorite experiences of my whole trip. Every weekend when I wasn't participating in the residency, I took the train, the really wonderful mass transit system within the Netherlands to almost every major city. And it was hard for me to not stop and take a picture of every single windmill I saw. But allowing me to take the train and crisscross Holland, it allowed me to meet different groups of people, spend time in a different city, and to kind of gather more information about global migrations of identity. Since I traveled a lot on the train, I spent a lot of time in train stations and newsstands. I was really fascinated by the magazine covers and the headlines that captured American politics. I was in Germany in 2016 pre-election where everyone was asking me as an American, how could we not be voting for Bernie? To being in the Netherlands post-election and trying to, to have to answer, how can Trump be our president? It was hard being a cultural translator for American politics when I felt like I didn't fully understand what was going on in my country and that I was still very deeply upset that when we would talk about American politics that I wasn't always seen as American enough and that just how complicated identity is all over the world and that a lot of these conversations brought up history, colonization, facts, and what can we do to make our countries better. I balanced all these heavy conversations by making work. My home base was the European Ceramic Work Center in the tiny town of Oysterwijk, where in many ways you felt like you were on a tiny island, but surrounded by beautiful nature, this large facility that gave you so many ceramic dream opportunities, and you were in cohort with about up to 20 other artists. It was so wonderful to wander around the building and just peek in and see what every artist was working on. Everyone had such unique different ideas, they came from all over the world, and it was always great to see a little snapshot of their process. This place probably had the cleanest and most organized plaster and mold making room I had ever been in. 
I loved the time I spent in this room with my other residency cohorts where we would spend hours making molds, talking to each other, helping each other, trying to figure out how to make a complicated mold, and also just listening to each other's ideas about our work, about our careers in other countries, how, how artists make a living in other countries, that those really late night conversations were some of my favorite parts of this place. The European Ceramic Work Center really sets you up if you want to make large ceramic work. I came there and probably made the world's smallest work, and that's okay with me. I used that time to experiment with some new ideas, to kind of think about my practice in a different way, how I can work more with the idea of insulation, and this is where I started working a lot with fake hair. On my breaks from the studio, I would travel to Tilburg, a city right next door to Oysterwijk, a large university city with a diverse Suriname and Indian population. Here I found a hair salon where I would go and hang out, talk to the people that owned it, and I would sit there and let women braid my hair, which led to some experimentation with porcelain beads and braids. In the studio, I was thinking about other ways and how I can use my body as an object and as part of a performance and worked with a video gaming studio to have my whole body 3D scanned. Using a lot of the equipment at European Ceramic Work Center, I took my 3D scanned image of my body, enlarged it 18%, and then had it milled in styrofoam to create an exact replica of my body. I created a really complicated process for myself, but I was using this time to learn how to incorporate digital processes into my practice. I was buying found ceramics, breaking them, scanning them, then 3D printing them 18% larger, and then making molds of them to create broken ceramic pieces that draped over the styrofoam body. The result of this overly complicated process is One Tough Bitch, a piece where these broken ceramic pieces fit perfectly into the nooks of my own body, that the enlargement of the styrofoam form with the enlargement of these broken molded pieces fits perfectly in every nook of my body, that all the cracks are highlighted in gold, to kind of show the beauty within the broken in ourselves. The kitchen with this beautiful refrigerator unit is a major heart of European Ceramic Work Center. At 10, 12, and 4, a bell rings to let you know it's coffee time, and sometimes coffee and cake time. And this is where every resident would come in, share a cup of coffee, we would catch up with each other about our days, we would find out if someone needs help. This is where we would all come together and help each other out. As a resident, twice a month, you have to cook for your 12 to 20 other residents. It's both extremely intimidating and humbling to cook for your fellow artists. These long, elaborate meals would stretch way into the night. There was always multi-course dinners, food from all over the world, people cooking, their favorite dishes from home, many bottles of wine, there was always a dessert, and in some ways it became an informal competition. I broke bread and met so many great people at my time in the Netherlands, but my most favorite person I met was a shook. He was a painter in a Delft factory and he taught me how to paint Dutch blue and white. He sat quietly next to me, and he looked over and quietly asked, where are you from? The question I get asked all the time. And here he told me his story of how he came from Suriname, that he was allowed to become a Dutch citizen, that many times people just would see him as brown Dutch, that his co-workers were nice to him, but not everyone on the street was. And then we would talk about painting, flowers, his family, his life there. And this one hour lesson turned into a three hour one. There was just a few of us working in the factory at this time, Ashuk and I next to each other, painting, 
having conversations about our family's immigration, identity, and race. He would look over and check my painting. He would gently tell me I was doing a good job and that he really meant it. And the whole time we were working, the radio was on in the background. And in the middle of a really deep conversation about American politics, Ashok stopped talking and started singing Dolly Parton and Kenny Rogers' song, Islands in the Stream. Because how can you not sing that song when it comes on the radio? And to me, it felt like the perfect way to end my time there. And it, it was the best way to end our conversation. I'm so thankful for meeting Ashok that I'm so proud he was my blue and white teacher. And I hope you all take advantage of the Lighten International Exchange Program and find that place anywhere in the world that will shake up your practice and give you these life experiences.